Welcome to The Journey Principles, where we show you how to go from stuck to unstoppable with life strategies that work. Now, here's your host and creator of the Transform You Framework, Stephen Scoggins. Hey guys, welcome back to The Journey Principles. As always, we're here to help you become unstoppable with life mastery strategies at work. I'm your host, Stephen Scoggins. Joining me today is my director of Connections, Connor Craft, who is our co-host, um, mm -hmm. who's obviously one of our uh, most influential people here. He's uh, hooking a brother up and uh, helping me grow on my own. So, Connor, what's going on, dude? Not much, man. Uh, uh, Mother's Day. Oh, gosh, you got to turn that yeah, off. Yeah, I got the Man, I'm usually the one that gets mad at you for that. Okay. <laughs> Forgot to turn that on mute. My bad, guys. Uh, yeah, so uh, Mother's Day was this past weekend. Got to yeah. spend some time with my mom. How'd that go for you? It was actually really good. Yeah. yeah we got to um, hang out with Karen and uh, obviously spend more time with her. The boys kind of did some stuff. I got her uh, a couple of little gifts here or there. Yeah. Uh, some of which she enjoyed this week. She just, she's just, as we're recording this, she's just getting back from a, a beach trip. Right. With, uh, some close friends and allies. We'll yeah. call it that. Wink, wink. Um, but yeah, no, it's good, man. Um, ready to, ready to see her. I haven't seen her in a few days. That's awesome. Yeah, that's cool. So, you know, ironically, uh, today's show is all about communication. And Let's just be transparent and honest, everybody. Yeah, sure. We have had a hell of a time this week ourselves, personally, communicating well. Right. <laughs> so we could probably, uh, we'll probably be able to digest kind of where we made mistakes and then kind of how we were able to overcome those uh, with a better tool of proper communication as we kind of share yeah, these I mean, concepts. Yeah, I mean, at the very least, we can tell you what not to do. <laughs> we just recently <laughs> learned. So, um, yeah. But yeah, no, communication is very, very important. And uh, yeah. one of our three main buckets that we teach in terms of how to transform your life is building better relationships. Yep. And uh, you've always taught me that communication is very, very important yep. in relationships. So uh, it's an important topic. Well, I also, mean, also think it goes to show that it's a situation that and not everybody's going to get it right all the time. Mm. Right. The goal is to get it more right than you do wrong more often than you don't. Kind yeah. Of scenario. Yeah. Like an 80, 20 or yeah. a 90, 10. You might want to pull the mic can. down just a little bit. I can, yeah. I can see your nose. There we go. There we go. There we Sorry, go. guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, so we, um, so you guys out there may not know this on the audience, but, um, whether you're, whether you're watching on YouTube or you're uh, listening on online, uh, through your favorite podcast out, uh, building a brand or building a company like we're trying to build currently to try to help as many people as possible um, with a very small team, very dedicated, very talented team, um, can at times be very difficult, especially when um, during this COVID scenario, when oh, everybody's yeah. working from home, we don't get a lot of face time with one another. It makes it really hard to kind of plan and project and kind of come up with our top priority list. Hmm. And at the end of the day, my number one priority list is help them. Right. Right. So and all the only the arguments that we have internally um, are how do we do that? Yeah. Right. How do we, how 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 do we actually help them? What are the priorities? What are the of priorities? What's the process? Order. Who's right. going to do what and stuff like that? And I feel like at the end of the day, everybody's bad communication comes down to either preconceived notions, uh, assumptions. So preconceived notion, meaning um they're not going to like this or uh, they're going to respond this way um, so that you almost get pre-defensive ahead yeah, of time. Yeah, so it's like you're, you're assuming that you have the other person's perspective before you actually go and gather it. Exactly. Yeah, right. so I mean, I think that's that drives a lot of it. Um, using a negative tone, you're going to talk about something kind of sensitive. Um, mm. Or... Um, does, it, does that mean being overly blunt or uh, it could be it could be it could mean that and then some so it could be your body language uh, it could be the tonality you're using meaning you know is your voice amped up is it drawn down are you talking soft are you talking loud like that kind of thing mm. um, are your arms crossed are they open are you smiling are you do you have your stink face on your, your angry face on um, it, it comes to a variety of different things right but we're sending signals we actually send more nonverbal signals than we do verbal signals to people on a regular basis. Right. You know, another unhealthy practice that we see a lot um, is trying to rally people to your side in an effort to have your side validated. So if there's like a, there's like a multiple person situation yeah. where like it's a group discussion yeah. or it's a group disagreement. Or it should be a group session, yeah. Right. So like if, I guess I'm saying is this is not really the case with conversations with just two people. But if there's mm -hmm. a disagreement, let's say in an organization, yeah, um, and people are going behind other people's backs and uh, venting or talking directly to other people about yeah. the one person that they're having the disagreement with, yeah. that's less conducive than let's say 
bringing everyone in the same room and saying, hey, so exactly. there, here's what I'm feeling. It's okay to go and get other people's perspective. Mm -hmm. But um, one of the things that I've been learning recently is, you know, I, I've done that some and, and, and gone around and basically gone one on one to other people and say, hey, this guy said this. I kind of disagree with this. Um, what do you think about it? Thinking that that was a productive way of doing that. But yeah. that really goes behind the back of the it person be, yeah. who I'm, I'm talking about. It builds about. distrust with one and. And you can end up having people gang up on one another by accident. Exactly. So it's it's, it's always best when it, when there's a there's a group dispute or if you want to get other people's perspective, bring everyone in the same room. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a more productive way of doing things. That's definitely something that's uh, been uh, typically my Achilles heel, not Achilles heel, my my tool, my tool bag, so to speak. Mm, right. Uh, my Achilles heel has actually been um, being overly de uh, defensive or getting overly aggressive really fast in in years past. So. Uh, case in point, when I started CHE, uh, I got a customer that um, I was doing some townhomes for. Okay, so uh, for those of you who don't know and haven't caught up some of the other episodes, one of the companies I own is a very large con a construction company specifically specializing in exterior products. So siding, doors, windows, roofing, that kind of deal. Um, that's the one that I started when I was sleeping in a car years and years ago. Right. Um, the largest of the, build, the, the current businesses I own. When I was very, very early on, I was still what what I what, what do they call them, a solopreneur? Is that, mm -hmm. is that what they're right. called? Yeah, yeah, solopreneur. Yeah, in the personal development space, I was a solopreneur. I didn't have any like official team members yet, but I did have some subcontractors, and we had this brand new project we were doing uh, called Carpenter Village, which in in North Carolina was out Wait. there in Raleigh. I'm uh, not Raleigh, Cary, Morrisville area. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Ex that's right by where I live. Yeah, yeah. I'll, you, I'm sure you've driven past the project. I've been in it. So there's been Carpenter Village condos that sit behind these single family homes and CHE did all of it back in I, the day. Wow. I know okay. I know exactly where you're talking about. Um it it just so happened that uh I was having I had the night before I hadn't slept well. I mean I I literally I may have got two or three hours of sleep and I had that moment where you wake up, you're late for everything you're doing, mm. you can't find your shoes, you can't find your car keys you know you're and you're already late like you're you know it's just like one of those mornings one of those every, days yeah. one of those mornings that everybody just like Ugh, right so i left the house angry and then i get a and then back in the day we used to have these nextel telephones it was like push to talk don't see those around a whole lot anymore but you push the button it's like a cb radio with a telephone kind of That's put together cool. um beep 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 goes off and it's this this construction manager at what this year was this site. oh gosh this is 2000 2001 oh. 2002 a ways away and he, he's he's calling me and he's I mean, he's like yelling at me to get going, you mm. know. Not I mean like he's like basically telling me his problems and how I'm the source of some of his problems. Meaning the guys that work for me working on his site with some of his problems. So I'm already mad. I already didn't sleep well. I already have a bad attitude because of all that. And then I have to basically speed to get there before a specific deadline so I didn't lose my customer kind of scenario. And then I get there, and without even thinking. Uh, I basically pulled my installers to the side and I began not cussing at them, but raising my tone in such a way that they had never seen before. Mm. To be honest, I'd never done it before. Yeah. And I remember looking back at being one of the biggest mistakes I made because I intentionally wanted this, other people to see that I was sharing their anger with other people, if that makes any sense. So some would call it dressing somebody down. So you're, it, you, some people have been cussed at and stuff like that. Um, in this particular instance, I was just raising my voice and whatnot. And I remember feeling as soon as I was done doing, kind of showing off with my attitude kind of deal, I remember being already regretful, mm -hmm. right? And I realized very, early, very like almost instantaneously that I had already lost a level of trust. I've had that happen so many times throughout my life. Mm -hmm. Like I'll just react out of out of anger and mm -hmm. out of like frustration, and um, not in the most mature and delicate manner. We'll say yeah. delicate, um, and I'll just literally like freak out and just. And usually, when I blow my top, my top really, really goes <laughs> off. Like I will really, really freak out. Um, historically, I've worked yeah. on that a lot. I've gotten a lot better at that. But I mean, years ago when I was especially younger as a teenager, mm -hmm. especially with my parents and stuff yeah. like that, I mean, oh, I would, I would freak. It's funny in the time that I've known you, you've, your, your communication style has vastly changed and improved. Mm -hmm. Um, we, we, on a uh, previous episode, we had talked about a disagreement you and I had and, uh, 
I was like, it was really hard to be mad at you. It was like you stole the bullets from my gun because you were like being man, you're manning up and being mature about it. It's like, I want to be mad at you and I can't be, be mad at you because you keep taking my bullets away <laughs> kind of thing. So, yeah. you know, so when I look at back that situation, the situation you just described, the previous situation I just mentioned, if, when you look at all three of those, there are some things that call them seven communication mistakes um, that I've kind of got jotted down here that I think would hit every last one of them. In other words, we got, you mentioned earlier that, so we know what not to do wrong. Yeah. <laughs> or not to do right. right yeah. Wrong. Kind of scenario. So we know what not to do. Um, and here's the first one. Using a one-size-fits-all communication style. Okay. Hmm. Now, when we teach the personality styles and the self-awareness things, um, it's a good idea that if, you, especially the more sensitive a topic is, the more time you take before you communicate about the topic. So for an example, um, this past week, um, I was trying to make some pretty wise decisions, not based on emotional frustration or anger or something like that, but from, okay, here's a real perspective, here are the real facts, here, here are the real impacts, here are the opportunities, here are the threats, right? And the only reason I did that is because his history has taught me that I need to have that time for me, okay? It also means that when um, you're looking at talking to someone, you are looking at their personality style, right? So um, if I'm going to be making the bigger the decision I make, the more I retreat to myself, the more I go into myself to go think about it and process it historically. My, ink, my uh, lead pencil just died. Sorry <laughs> about that. Um, and in this particular situation, I knew that if I stepped out and I, and I went out to even other people first, or if I came out of my emotional frustration, All right. I was going to say something I would end up regretting. And one of the moments that it got me thinking about that was this time in Carpenter Village. Because not only did I lose confidence in the people that was in, that I had their trust. I mean, they, they, were, they, were, they would have said I was a decent leader even then. And then I also lost the trust of the customer, even though the customer just got through doing the same stinking thing to me over the telephone. Hmm. So it's interesting that everyone's always watching and how you communicate with other people. And it's important to realize that in order to get a point across, get a healthy communication thing across, you're going to have to lean in the other personality style. What ended up happening with that job? Yeah, so, I mean, what ended up happening is I ended up having to basically put my tail between my legs and go apologize to the installer and actually go man up to the customer and tell the customer I never should have done that to begin with. Wow. What happened when you did that? Uh, it, took, it took a couple of weeks for the, for the sting to wear off, and then uh, slowly, over time, I earned the trust back and... They realize it was an isolated moment of stupidity, <laughs> um, which we are all capable of having from time to time. Yeah, um, you know it's 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 impossible to be to basically be what my wife would refer to as on all the time, meaning constantly being aware. Um, I find that I personally make my biggest stupidest mistakes when I'm tired or Me if I'm too. hungry. I'm so tired today, guys. So I'm just gonna be <laughs> quiet. Let him do the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know. So those those are those are some areas. So you got to lean in. Um, I think another thing that I learned in that moment, some of the other things we talked about is uh, communication is so much more about listening than it is about speaking. Yeah, for sure. That's one of the biggest things that I've like recently learned about you and uh, or learned from you and uh, some of the content that, that we teach. Um, and as I've tried to implement that more and I've practiced it because I've had situations where I just want to blurt out how I'm feeling. But <laughs> Don't I'm like, no, you know what? Hang on. Let me hang back and ask them what yep. their perspective is on this first. And what I found very, very often to happen is that uh, when I when I listen first and I hear their perspective, everything I wanted to say it might be valid, but you gain extra perspective and you're like, oh, well, you know, two of the things that I wanted to complain about would actually be solved by if I worked on the things from their perspective, and then we can come together. And there's still this one thing that I think mm -hmm. I need to bring up to the table. Yeah, so passionate. And about. then you come up, come in yeah. together and basically make a compromise. Yeah. Um, and I found that that yields way better results than just two people yelling at each other and no, trying to get their get way. No, you can't get anything that way. Yeah. No, yeah, for sure. Yeah, no, I, I totally, totally agree with that. You know, we um, listening comes in a variety of forms. I think, and I think that's why it's so difficult for people to understand what listening is, um, because there's listening to understand, which is the primary goal, and there's also listening to just hear. Right, that means you're staring at the person across the table or across the way, and they're talking. You're listening, mm -hmm. kinda, but you're more focused on what you want to say rather than what they're trying to articulate. And then there's also listening out of personal bias, meaning um, there's an element of 
uh, you're looking through a personal lens of previous disagreements. Um, there's listening from assumptions, right? None of these things are really all that helpful unless you're listening to understand. And one of the things that um, I think you've seen me do several times that I learned from a good friend of mine, Chris, Le Chris Lacurto, a long time ago was one phrase, which is, can you help me understand? Yeah. So can you help me understand where you're coming from? Can you help me under understand your perspective? And it's always important to validate the perspective. Okay. You, you know, it's, it's okay to say, hey, I think I understand where you're coming from. And this is, this is what I heard you say. Right. Right. Which makes the other person feel heard, which typically brings the tone down. Right. No, exactly. So you see so you. The first step, though, is to ask them, hey, can they help me understand. Mm -hmm. Then when they explain it to you, then you can essentially repeat to them. OK, so here's what I'm hearing you say. And when you repeat that, I have found that that kind of creates a bridge yeah. between what you want to say and what they're trying to say. Mm -hmm. And you can essentially connect. Yeah. I mean, wisdom comes from listening first and speaking last. You know, I've learned that that's uh, the hard way. Uh, and it's the, the most difficult time to listen well is when you're the most agitated. Yes. And I think that makes you human. That's why it's very, very important. And you can't technically, I guess, always do this. Cause there's some, well, maybe you can. You can tell me. But um, it, it's really if you feel like you're too agitated to really be responsible and mature in an in a argument or in a debate, it might be a good idea to essentially step back mm -hmm. and say, hey, look, I need to take a few minutes yeah. or a, a few hours. I will get back to you in a little bit. We'll have this conversation. Go outside, yeah. take some deep breaths. Um, and then, you know, for me, like, <laughs> I like I was very frustrated with you yesterday yeah. even. And then today we came in and we had this very pleasant discussion. Um, there wasn't all pleasant because it was yeah. we were doing using these tactics. Well, we were but, we were trying to focus on the problem and not the person. Which right. Is the difficult part. But yesterday, you know, I was all like, you know, if we had had that conversation yesterday, I, w I wouldn't have handled it as <laughs> maturely. And then this morning I just woke up. I had slept on it and yeah. I was like, OK, I think I know what I needed to do. Yeah. I got in the shower. I was taking deep breaths. I was like, OK. How, how what are the things that I want to say and then how am I going to go about this and my mind just came up with okay well you're going to listen to what he has to say first mm -hmm. and you're going to keep everything that you want to say yeah. in your uh, in, in, you know in your peripheral vision yeah. while hearing him out first would you say that uh, putting the listening module first meaning actually coming in ready to listen first set you up to have a better conversation 100% because when you when you listen and you hear it also help like if you Frankly, if you do want to get your way with things, don't you think it makes more sense to understand what the other person wants so that you can basically use that and say, okay, well, I understand what you want. I also understand what I want. There's a connection there. Okay. You know what I mean? I was wondering where you're going to go with that, if you're going to go with manipulation. I'm not, not. Well, I'm not <laughs> trying to, and I heard it in my voice. I was like, it does sound like manipulation. But no, but like str strategically, it does make more sense to no, listen so there's, first. So to what, what, I, what actually came out of your mouth was you got to be looking for a win-win strategy. Right, exactly. So, and I think that's, that's um, that was the tempo. Like, there's, it's okay to voice a frustration. It's okay to voice um, some resentment, some hurt feelings, stuff like that. I find that most of the time, the reason those things are in place is because an expectation wasn't met. And a lot of times, the expectation itself wasn't clearly articulated, which is why the disagreement happened to begin with. Yeah. 100%. So I see that a lot. That's what I meant. A win-win. Yeah. Exactly. Um, in this particular situation, uh, I felt like because we came in ready to listen, and I was ready to listen to you first. I'm like, go ahead. Yeah, I know. I know. You are. That's what was crazy is like I walked in. You're like, all right, what do you have to say? And I was like, oh, that's interesting because I just recently <laughs> learned from a very wise man talking about you. I was like <laughs> that uh, I should listen before I speak. So you go first. <laughs> yeah, which was interesting. And then, um, but, you know, to your point, though, I think we both had a... Um, a couple of days, at least me specifically, because I'm a recluse. Like when I've got, the more important the decision, the more time I take. I know that sounds crazy because people see me move fast or what I deem as the most important decision. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, the more time I take to kind of make sure I do it. I go, um, as a person of faith, I go and spend a lot of time with prayer. I may or may not reach out to a coach or a mentor or somebody I can kind of confide in and trust that's completely unrelated to the the business side of the things or the, you know, a marriage or something like that, right? It's people that have some experience, you know, in the, in the given category. And, um, I needed time to process just in general to get into, and I've, and I've been using that technique for a long time. I, I quit just sitting down with someone, letting them speak, trying to listen, and then trying to settle the argument, the disagreement, the debate, whatever you want to call it in that moment in time. Mm-hmm. 
Um, sometimes one of the best things you can possibly do is to sit back and say, thank you for the information. I want to take a few, I want to give this the time it deserves. I want to take a few moments to go ponder this. Can I connect right. with you in the next 24 hours? Well, and or 20 or 48 hours in our case. A hundred percent. And also like, I, I, I was just, this just came to my mind about the win-win situation thing. Um, how do you expect to find a win-win situation if you haven't actually asked the other person what a win looks like for them? Mm. You can't. So if you go so into Christian, every when you when you hear this podcast, you quote Connor on that one. That was good. <laughs> so I mean, I just I feel like if you if you go in go into it basically just trying to f communicate your win. Yeah. You don't you don't know what theirs is, so you can't find the bridge. There's no way to get a bridge. There's no way. Yeah, because you, you it's like trying to build a bridge off a cliff. Right. There's no no other piece of mountain to join it to. For sure. Yeah. No, that's brilliant. Nice Thank job. You. Yeah. High five on that one. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Yeah, all right. So the other thing is, um, we mentioned this earlier, but the, the 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 third biggest mistake I see people make is assuming, assuming, mm. assuming you already know the answers to the question. Um, I, this has been said by somebody else, but I most often hear it out of my wife's mouth, which is assuming makes an ass out of you and me. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, assuming. Yeah, it does, and it's That's true. Awesome. Every time you assume that you already know the intention of the other person, you know the action of the other person, the um, the perspective of the other person. Every stinking time, every time, at least in my experience that I've ever seen that happen, um, it blows up in your face, hmm. which makes you look like a jerk. And that's why it's important to ask their perspective first mm -hmm. and clarify that. Even if you think you have a history yeah. with this person of, oh, I know where they're going with this. Oh, I know what their attitude is. Because I've found way more often than not that I am surprised because I think that I know exactly where they're coming from. Turns out they have a completely different perspective. And they're like, well, no, I'm not doing this, this, and this at all. Yeah. I just uh, the, here's here's why I felt the need to do that, and then I'm like, oh, I actually contributed <laughs> to that a little bit <laughs> yeah. a lot of times. And I'm like, oh, okay. What was it like figuring that out, having that little epiphany? Humbling. Yeah. Why? Mm -hmm. Because I went into it thinking that it was all the other person's fault. Mm. Um, you know, anytime I've ever been in that situation, I, I went into it thinking, you know, I have this problem because this person wronged me. This person is just such a a hole or whatever for for acting in this way and you know they must be doing that re because of this this and this reason mm -hmm. that I've created in my mind yeah. when in reality when I go and ask that person hey okay. why'd you do this I didn't think like that at all <laughs> yeah well yeah well yeah they're, they're, they're like oh well you know here's why I did this I understand that that's not what you wanted but here's why it happened yeah. uh, from my perspective I'm like oh I actually could have prevented that by yeah. me fixing something or you know oh that was just a miscommunication or misunderstanding on their end they weren't intentionally trying to you know cause a disagreement yeah, or something like that exactly <laughs> so you so it's easy when especially when you're angry to go straight to like this person's intentionally doing this to you know uh to stab me in the back or whatever mm -hmm. yeah. um whereas usually people have their own reasons for things and yeah. whether they're justified or not they might believe actually i feel like they almost always do believe well, so ironically there's a team member that we have in the che office and her name's faith faith hudson um shout out to you girl if you're listening um who came up with a wise decision or wise saying um i don't i'm sure she didn't originate because she mentioned that she says my dad always said so mm. that tells me that's because he's a he's a pastor um she said that uh every man is right in their own eyes mm. so no matter when you talk about intention right you know even in our disagreement i was pretty certain that i i was anchored on truth and you were pretty so was i 100 yeah, percent. we're and like we're, wait a minute there's parts of this and that both right. of us can be right on and 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 when two people both are convinced that they are right and they're unwilling to relinquish to any kind relinquish of relinquish any kind yeah. of like okay well let me hear your perspective never gonna end well well and I think that's why it, I think that's why we keep hitting the word perspective you know the first phase in in in, in transform you when we use the, when we overlay it with the grow process is gain perspective truth is found when we gain perspective right it's it's truth that we're really sinking right um, one of the things that's worked really well um, and it's it's funny how people including myself um, can get it screwed up one day and be the and be basically the the barroom cooler the next day. Meaning they're the person that's this basically putting back together somebody else's disagreement. But it's, mm. it's interesting how that happened. But one of the things that I'm trying to do after I hear so step one for me is is I try to let the other person speak first. I try to I honestly try to listen to what they're saying. Um, if I feel like I'm struggling to listen, I actually make myself repeat back to them what I think they're saying. 
because it's also really surprising that when you do that, people will also say, well, I didn't say that. And you're like, yeah, you did, mm. right? And rather than say, well, yeah, you did, and you're gonna say, well, I must have misheard and misunderstood something because that's, that's what I felt like I heard, right? You, you, again, you're focused on the problem, but so step one, perspective. Step two, repeat it back to them if possible. Step three, the goal was to find common ground and build backwards. So even in our discussion today before we went on air, which I'm glad. See, I, I love the fact that we had the discussion before we went on air because I, I would rather be honest with people. What's crazy is most people would think like, like oh, that would throw off the whole mood of the podcast nah. and all that. Kind of, yeah, no. I, no, I, I think I, I, like I, I think people are I think people are dying for transparency and authenticity. I think especially when you look at influencers and you look at people that are in the personal development space, there's a lot of um, – There's a lot of people putting on a show. That's That's where I would go. Yeah, and I'm I would not rather name just be any names or anything, but like, oh, they, yeah, there I don't are, want to do that. They, and there's there's plenty of legit people. people too. Of course, there's I mean, plenty there, of legit people. There are people. days when when I feel like I've did a I've done a really good job of communicating. I've done a really good job of helping people. There are other days that I that I have a bad day. I I got two hours of sleep. Mm -hmm. I didn't eat. My my kids aren't cleaning up their room. Uh, <laughs> any number of things. A right. customer calls me all bad and all that kind of stuff. And uh, all that kind of, you know what I'm saying? There's a whole ton of that kind of stuff. And I think that's where the, the difficulty comes into play is most of us aren't going into a communication to look for common ground. So you can't get to win-win situation until you get a common ground situated, right. right? So that's kind of the number one goal. The other thing that I think is the fourth thing that, um, that could be the biggest mistake you can make in communication is, and this didn't happen in Carpenter Village, but it's happened recently um, in, within our organization that we've had to kind of address and get to the bottom of, and that is used, um, is actually avoiding difficult conversations, hmm. right? So avoidance doesn't make the pain go away. If anything, it intensifies it. So you're saying, you, yeah, it's a mistake. You don't, a, you want, don't to want to avoid it. It's entirely appropriate to say, hey, look, I'm not in a good frame of mind right now. I'm, I'm seriously, I don't really feel like I'm doing a, like, if I respond right now, it's not going to be good. Mm. Uh, some people are going to want to fight anyway. Yeah. So let them fight. Just don't, just don't, you don't have to talk <laughs> kind of thing. So you essentially have to put your ego aside yep. for the sake of maturity. Yep. Let them blow off their steam. Yep. Take the beating, be the punching bag for a little bit, and then, yep. and then walk away, and you will come back. And by the way, you'll have the high ground when you come back because mm -hmm. oftentimes – especially if you just take that beating, what's going to happen is, yeah. and I'm not advocating for anyone to just like let someone run all over you, but yeah. if you do that, oftentimes when you come back, that person kind of feels a little guilty for the way they handled things, especially if you are calm and mature yeah. and it gives you, you know, the, the, the leg room to essentially Well, I mean, and I operate. think that's, I think that's brilliant because it's, you got to find common ground in order to build a bridge. You can't build a bridge without common ground and you can't get a win-win strategy without building a bridge, right? So... We want to make sure we take the time to, to do those types of things. So it's okay to step aside for a time frame. I'm going to advocate 24 to 48 hours for mm. a very difficult conversation. Okay. Got it. Now you may need up to a week, but you don't want to get really past that. Right. You, you don't want to, cause then you get into avoidance. I'm curious what's the best way to actually do that. Well, I mean, I, th I think it's just like, almost like what I shared with you a couple of days ago when we, when I messaged the entire team and said, guys, I'm going to, just, you know, I've got to make some big decisions. And as I'm looking at these big decisions, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to step away and I'm going to be gone for a little bit. Oh, Meaning yeah, I'm not going to communicate a whole lot. I'm just, because I want to have clarity of thought. I don't want emotions to influence my decisions. I don't want negative thinking to influence my decisions. I want to look at it from an opportunities and threats kind of perspective. So the bigger the decision, the more time you take. All right. It's that simple, but it's okay to say, Hey, look, I don't feel like we're going to get anywhere with, with where we're at today. Why don't we both go and get a, a few minutes to ourselves and kind of work through that a little bit? Right. So you're going to make sure that you don't take the time to avoid difficult communication. You want to spend enough time to process the information, get to a good state, stable place emotionally wise, mm -hmm. then hit it, then actually have it. Yeah. You also have to give the other person that same time. So all because it took you 24 hours to get to the, the healthy place and the answer, if it takes the other person another 24 hours, then you should wait. Don't rush into it, but then don't avoid it as well. Got it. Reacting, not responding. <laughs> um, what I mean by that is, is if you respond out of anger and frustration, like I did in this Carpenter Village example that we talked mm. about a little earlier, you were going to make an ass out of yourself. Right. So you're going to you devalue wanna, trust. You want to make a calculated response. You need to sit back and think. Mm -hmm. um, I've actually noticed the biggest thing that I've probably done differently, or at least I've, I've worked on doing differently 
this time around because obviously I knew you four or five years ago as well mm -hmm. and you said that there's been a big change in my communication mm -hmm. um, I think the biggest thing that I've noticed in that time frame is now you, you even told me when I came back you said you know you're a bit more calculated now like a sniper rather than mm -hmm. a like just someone who a just bazooka. Uh, it's a bazooka because <laughs> which I one's to gonna just, blow more stuff up right because I used to <laughs> I used to just kind of essentially uh, yeah. uh, react immediately and just be like, well, that frustrates me because of this yeah. and this and that's wrong and blah, blah, blah. And, and not even really like sit back and calculate and think. But when you sit back and think and you just take a second before rushing into your response, um, you can kind of run, run through and consider yeah. what's the most mature way to handle this. I mean, from my perspective, it is to, again, basically take a deep breath. I mean, it, so I'm, I'm going to use a, just a recent example of where you and I were, you and I personally were in a disagreement and I felt like the best thing to do was to not continue to argue or debate about a given thing that was causing frustration on each one of us. I felt like it was wise to step away, wise to get clear on one, ask yourself, am I, am I part of the problem here? Right? Am I is my ego in the way? Am, am, is it pride? What like what is driving me to anchor in so much on this this one concept, this one concern, this this one way in which I'm approaching this? Mm. And then actually ask your then take that next step and say, Hey, look, I wonder what it would be like to walk in their shoes. Right? What it would be like to have to step in from their perspective. And I think that was one of the things I enjoyed about even our meeting uh, before we went on air today was that's exactly how you did it. You were like, okay, so here's my, here's my frustrations. Here's where they came from. But then I realized that some of these frustrations, as if most of these frustrations would have been alleviated had I done this taken this particular action or made this particular decision. Hmm. And I find that a lot of that, a lot of times that can happen for a lot of different people in a lot of different circumstances. So I would say the wisest thing to do to avoid just reacting is to make sure you're in the right headspace to respond, mm -hmm. right? Make sure you're, it's not an emotional trigger, right? It's never wise to have a debate or an argument when you're mad. Mm. It's just not. No, you're not going to get anywhere because it's going to be like, well, if you and you and and them and if you, like, you, that's all you're going to be talking about. And the other person will be like, all right, my shields are up too, buddy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, anytime right. I can play ball. Right, I mean, yeah. yeah anytime, anytime th someone's got spears and and arrows and guns aimed at you, you're gonna hide behind something or put something in front of you. Yeah. Right. Just, or throw your own arrows. Yeah. Well, you probably do both. Yeah. Right. So, what it makes it really hard to have this massive war is what if the other person just walk away? <laughs> mm. It makes people mad sometimes, but you know, it's you gotta you gotta make sure that how you're yeah you're, you're there's a good chance you piss people off by walking away but but it it is at the cost of short term pissing them off in order to come back in a mature and collected manner right. now here's a question yeah yeah if you have someone who's very immature and they're like you walked away and you're like a little wimp like I I don't really know um, how to put this but does that mean that that person isn't worth having the conversation with uh, oh, that's a hard one like when some, you come some, back of these, if, some of these people are going to have to have conversations with right um now i would say they would fall into close to the toxic categories which means you create mm. distance that we talked about in previous episode. so that's a toxic relationship type thing like it's like more you, toxic than if you not. try to try to set healthy boundaries and say okay hey i need some time yeah. to space to walk away and then you come back the next day and you're like okay i'm ready to have a mature conversation and they're essentially being an a-hole still yeah. is what I'm saying. Like that's that's a toxic behavior. And it can be construed be... as a toxic behavior. Okay. It's there. It's definitely not going to help you get any common ground. And the best thing I think you can do in that situation is to just uh, distance yourself. Uh, distance yourself. Uh, don't engage. Meaning don't. It, I kind of look at it like this. I kind of feel like it's a they're laying a snare out in front of your feet and trying to entice you to step in it. Right, because they're like, oh, well, you want to come back and be all kind? Here you go. Here's the snare. Exactly. And then, a test. then you, then if you, if you take the emotional action, put your foot in it. Guess who gets caught up in the tree? You. Exactly. Which leaves you vulnerable. It leaves then you, you get pissed. You get pissed off again because you're like, oh, I went and did the mature thing here. I'm yeah. approaching this from a mature. Because I, I've had that happen a lot. Yeah. Like I'll take a step back and try to be the mature one, and then the person who before was mm -hmm. arguing with me is not ready to be mature. <laughs> and I get all pissed because I'm like, I'm trying to do this in the right way and you won't even be reasonable. Now, I will say, 
when you execute these communication tactics right, mm -hmm. I found that more times than not, they will be reasonable and amicable. Mm -hmm. But there are some people who are just that stubborn who who won't. It just takes time. If everybody's on their own emotional intelligence journey, their own self awareness journey, and you may or may not be higher in them. They may have you for all you know, their dog just got died, got killed that day. That's true. Right. So traumatic things or difficult things tend to make difficult conversations more difficult that day. Right. That's why I made it a point to. Um, so you've never. I think you've heard me. I think you've heard me say this before. I will never tell the team or anybody that works for me or my family, my kids, that I'm always right because I'm not. Um, in fact, uh, I'm probably, I could probably always use more grooming like everybody else. I would say that I am always willing to say I'm sorry. It may take me 24 to 40 hours to get there, mm -hmm. but if I realize that I've screwed up and I could have done something better, I have zero problem going up and, and being a sincere, I'm sorry, I jacked that up. Because it, we're human. Right. Right? So those are the types of things I think will kind of happen there. I wanted to kind of close out the show with a couple, um, three very wise things um, that I've heard in part. Um, one of which is from my wife, which I'm actually, this, this I remember we were sitting at a uh, rest, we were sitting at a Chili's restaurant one afternoon. Um, gosh, it was probably four years ago. And she, it was a beautiful day outside. She was in a, her little, beautiful little sundress kind of like thing with her shoulders kind of showing. And we got to talking about something. Journey, we had just started Journey Principles, and we were trying to figure it out and figure out what is this going to be? What is it going to look like? Is, it, is this something we're going to do together? Is this something we're going we're to do separate? Meaning, you know, because she's really heavily, she's like super rock star when it comes to the endometriosis foundation, uh, like an outspoken right. sp spokesperson. That's definitely her calling and or one of the pieces of her calling for sure. Um, but the disease hadn't kind of reared its head again in our relationship yet, in our family and whatnot. In other words, she was she asymptomatic, yeah, asymptomatic, or she was keeping the symptoms from me, kind of scenario. Like she wasn't, it wasn't out in the open. Let's put it that way. Hmm. And I remember we got on the on the subject about talking or about communication, and then she said that she said these words, and this is important because I think this even played a part in some of our uh, debating that we had this week ourselves. Words cannot hear what a mouth cannot say. Words cannot hear what a mouth cannot say. Mm -hmm. In other words, all these different things that you want to communicate to a person that you wish they knew, well, the only way they're going to ever know it is if you speak it. Hmm. So the, all the bitterness, all the resentment, all the frustration, all, all the dissatisfaction, all the low expectation, all of that stuff, if you're not communicating it in a healthy manner, then how can you ever expect a person to respond in such a way that you would deem as a win-win strategy? Hmm. I always thought that quote, that quote was brilliant. That came from my wife. We were just sitting, like I said, we we're sitting at a, a, a Chili's and she's like, boop. I'm like, oh my gosh. I even quoted it back in the day. Yeah. I bet it's still down, like way down in the Instagram feed. Probably is. With her, I mean, because I took the picture at the moment she said it. No way. And then quoted it. Yeah. I think it's way down in the Instagram feed. All right. The other one is, it's okay to be passionate as long as it doesn't become personal. Hmm. In other words, it's okay to go at a problem. It's okay to have communication that becomes passionate. And people communicate passion in different ways, right? So if um, one of my wife's friends is married to a full-blooded Italian and everything about him is loud, hmm. right? Hey, da, 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 you know, just, he's just kind of boisterous, right? Um, whereas someone who is not as boisterous might show their passion by using their hands a lot, okay? It's okay to communicate in passion as long as it doesn't come personal. When I'm angry and frustrated, that's not the time I want to sit down with somebody and have a conversation with them. I want to come back at it when I can make sure that the what we're talking about, even if we're passionate about it, like even the conversation you and I had earlier today, we can be passionate about our points of our perspective and our points of view, but I don't want to be personal. You know? You know, and you know, if I look at our our just our dynamic, right? You you've always trusted me to to be a good leader and, and to mentor you when you were and stuff like that. And then I've learned a lot just by watching you grow and made, which hopefully makes me better. Mm -hmm. Right. But I also think you're an amazing human being with amazing potential. Who's going to do a lot of amazing things. Right. And the last thing that I want to do is let one passionate conversation short circuit that whole dream or that. Yes. Whole I feel the same way. Cause I'll get really excited and passionate. It's, it's cause we want the same thing. Yeah. 
we both want we both want to transform a million lives. Yeah. We, we both have the same goal. We just sometimes have different opinions on what's the best way to get there. Yeah. And, and those uh, things are open for discussion. And when and when both of us are like, well, I'm right, and I'm so confident I'm right because of this reason yeah. and this reason and, and this then we can butt heads yeah, because yeah. we're both like, I'm not going to sacrifice the mission just because you <laughs> are wrong. Like, and it can, and that's basically where we take it sometimes. And then we have to take a step back and be like, okay, yeah. is that, are they really wrong or are we both kind of right? Yeah. And which is usually the case. Well, and I think that's what we ran into. We were both all right. And we were both all wrong in this particular instance. Yeah. The same time. Yeah. We're both right. Both wrong. The one thing that I realized though, is we did, I don't know that in this particular situation, we both communicated from a healthy place on the early onset. We didn't. Like, no. I don't remember even telling you uh, last week when we were, when this whole conflict, it was the beginning of this, this beginning of this week. Yeah. This whole thing originated, this whole debate originated. I don't remember you saying, hey, Connor, here's the reason why I feel like I need to jump in and do this. Blah, 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 blah. I just did it. <laughs> right. And I was like, why did you do this without telling me and communicating? And it was like, lack of communication. Then we were going back and forth. You're like, well, I should be able to do this and a uh, whole, you know, whole, whole <laughs> we did, big thing. We went down a rabbit hole. You guys have been there. Like, don't, don't play. We, we know you've been there. So here's what we've learned that you guys can learn from. Take a step back. Don't let it get personal. Come ready to build a bridge. Yeah. And don't, neither of us at the end of the day, we were able to resolve our conflict. First Very of quickly. all, because, first of all, because we both stepped into maturity. Yep. But second of all, because both of us want the same thing yep. and we both refuse to let the mission um, uh, or sorry, we've both refused to let our ego and pride come before the mission. For sure. And the, at the end of the day, what you would find is if somebody came at you, <laughs> I'm the first one to get in front of the bullet. If somebody came at you or for him sure. at me, you, for sure. you wouldn't care. Well, you wouldn't care my fight for the place, but <laughs> right. So if you come after my kids and my wife, we got a problem. Let's yeah. put it that way. Yeah. You, you will see the Wolverine or lion as you guys like to refer to it internally. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, you no, really so are the Wolverine, man. I mean, the <laughs> comics version for sure. A hundred percent. Although I am five foot five and he was five, three in the comics. Just for a record. I got, Oh, dude, you've, you've got some inches on him, man. <laughs> you, you got this. It's the first time in history. Um, all right, guys. I, we we wanted to make sure today was more of an, uh, a transparent, open uh, communication. Um, we covered a, a handful of things of what not to do. Hit those really fast. Don't use a one size fits all approach. Don't speak more than you listen. Don't assume. Don't use negative tones. Don't avoid difficult conversations. Don't react. Respond, and always keep on. And don't have a closed mind. Right. Hmm. All right. Those are the things to avoid. The things to do are take a step back, gain perspective, build a bridge. So those are the takeaways for the show. Um, we also want to let you guys know, because we are transparent and vulnerable, we're real. We're authentic. We're, we are human beings. We're going to have mm -hmm. our ups and downs as well. We're the not your average is, perfect guru. Or for sure. But if you think about some of the conversations that have happened in the past, these are types of things that take relationships apart. Right. And if one of the things in our in our wheelhouse, our core values, if you will, is to is to is to build quality relationships, so you can surround yourself with great people, then you're going to bump into communication and you need to know how to handle it. Correct. So if you right. lose those, if you use those principles, you'll start to win. You'll build a bridge. You'll have lived to fight another day and you won't hurt anybody or lose anybody in the process. So we hope you enjoyed the show today. Uh, feel free to like, share and comment. We'd appreciate any comments and whatnot. Uh, it helps us make better, con uh, better content for you. Uh, as a pivot of that, make sure if you have questions, make sure you email them at questions at journeyprinciples.com. Uh, in the coming shows, we've actually got some questions in, which I'm pretty excited about, mm -hmm. um, that we will spill, we'll take one question and do an entire show on. Like, yeah. That we've got some really good questions coming in. Yeah. Um, and I want to make sure we give those the time that it needs and deserves. So make sure you get your questions in. Until then, we'll see you on the next Journey Principles. Take care, guys. Bye. I'll see you in the next video. And please, if you don't mind and you enjoyed the Life Mastery content we're building, consider hitting the subscribe button and also hitting the bell so you'll be the first to get notified anytime we release new content.